Welcome back. In today's video, we will be talking about the very basics of networking. I called it Networking 101. So this video, if you are very new to networks or networking or to computing in general, um, I cannot stress enough how networking is important if you are willing to start a career in pen testing or uh, even in um, the blue team as a cybersecurity analyst. So networking is very important. Um, today we will talk about the very basics. Um, previously, uh, there was a room called Introductory to Networking. It talked about the Aussie model and this kind of stuff. If you are just st getting started, uh, this is the very beginning and then you will go to Aussie model and other internet protocols. Now for now, we will talk about the very basics so the first thing is how devices communicate and then we will go over the difference between internal and external networks and lastly we will go over the ping command okay so basically here how do devices communicate over a network first we have the ip by ip addresses or by mac addresses now ip addresses an ip address is composed of four octets they call it octets so an ip address an example of ip address is this so an ip address is composed of four octets the first octet here we can say 192 that's the first octet second one 168 that's the second octet and the third one let's say one and the fourth is one as you can see, the IP address here is composed of four octets. Now, I, all IP addresses um, are composed using a numbering system. That's IPv4, by the way. V4. We will talk about IPv6 later in the video. Now, how IPv4 are calculated? They all follow a numbering system. Where? 2 to the power 32. So 2 to the power 32 equals 4.9 billion IP addresses, 4.29 billion IP addresses, basically. So that's how IPv4 addresses are calculated, 4 to the power 29 billion IP addresses. So as you can see, uh, there are already a shortage in IPv4 addresses. That is why these days there is an adoption for ipv6 now ipv6 is a bit different from ipv4 ipv6 follows the formula of 2 to the power 128 which equals to 340 trillion plus That's why now, that's that's why IPv6 now covers the shortage of IPv4 addresses. And actually, by 2025 or 26, my estimation is that half, most of the not half, most of the internet will be using IPv6 addresses. They are more efficient, faster, and as you can see, they allow for more uh, IP addresses. Now let's switch the page. Okay. So, what, let's talk about more now about IPv6. So we saw now that IPv6, actually, how the, what is the numbering system of IPv6, and we saw why they will be used more than IPv4 addresses. Now, let's talk about how IPv6 are formed. So an example of IPv6 would be, let's say 2A00, and you have one column here, okay? And then let's say 2 to C4. And you have also two column. A531. You have also one column here. C500. Um, one column as well. Four. This is also this is just an example, okay? Um C C E say six. And lastly here, let's put two more. C36B 
and f6 for the that is an example of ipv6 address so when you see this okay not literally the letters but see the formula you have too much too many columns as you can see separated by four characters now the, this is called ipv6 address um, of course you can do conversion between ipv4 and ipv6 so you can convert to one into another form or the ipv6 to ipv4 addresses now let's talk about mac addresses so what is a mac address mac address is short for media access control mac address is the physical ad is the uh, physical address of your computer so as if you know uh, as of all of you know that all computers have microchips on the motherboards uh, the network interface is assigned a unique address from the factory where it was built this network interface holds an address called media access control or mac address mac address is composed of 12 characters and the form is in hex so ipv4 use uh, is different than so the difference between MAC and IP is actually the representation so MAC addresses are represented by hex characters and they are composed of 12 characters and that is very different from IPv6 and IPv4 now an example of a MAC address would be let's say a4 okay so as you can see 12 characters will be separated by columns and the composition is two by two so a4 that's two c3 that's two one column and then we have two another column 85 another column ac another column 2d that is a mac address so 12 characters separated by columns and they are combined two by two two by two that's an example of a mac address so again a mac address is your physical is the physical address of your computer it's actually the network interface card address of your computer and it comes actually uh, with the computer you cannot change your mac address in no way although there are some programs and softwares that would uh, theoretically change the mac address but this is your actual mac address it doesn't change as opposed to ipv4 address that can be changed using a vpn so now this is too advanced for uh, a networking 101 class but let's not talk about the vpn now i'm just uh, laying down the notion that mac can not be changed ipv4 can change in some scenarios where uh, there is MAC spoofing, so there is something called MAC spoofing. Now we will demonstrate that uh, with a practical scenario. MAC spoofing is a scenario where someone would just change their MAC address to be equal to the MAC address of your MAC address or the MAC address of another device. The idea behind max spoofing is to impersonate identities okay now let's talk about networks so so in the first page here we talked about ips and max now devices communicate mostly with ip addresses but on the internal network before identifying ip addresses mac addresses are used so basically if we go back here let's say we have a network let's say we have a computer a here computer a and we have here computer b here we have um yeah let's say a simple network router 
Now, router is a network device that is dedicated to route network requests between devices. That's its simple definition. Routing requests between network devices, including routing requests between computer A and B or computer A and here, let's say we have the internet. All right, now let's now discuss the role of IPs and Macs in this scenario. So say we have two devices on the network, computer A and computer B, and we have the router. So computer A, this should be here, let's say um, IP, and it has MAC address, as well as here we have IP and MAC address. So now when devices are connected to the router, okay, they will be assigned an IP address. So the router will assign IP addresses to both computer A and computer B. So let's take an example. An IP address for computer B would be 192.168.15. And now on computer B, uh, 192.168.1.7. Notice that both devices are on the same network. That's why you see they share the, the first three octets. 192.681, 192.681, and the only difference is the last octet. Here we have seven and we have five. This is the host part of the IP. This part is called the network part. This is called the host part. All right, now basically, in any IP address, the only part that changes is the host part here, this one, 7 or 5. And the router has an IP of 192.168.1.1. Okay, now devices, once computer A and computer B are assigned IP addresses, they will be ready to communicate with each other, uh, with the router, and of course with the internet. Now, Still, we didn't discuss what is the role of MAC addresses here. Now, basically, before, before IPs are assigned, how would computer B and computer A communicate with the router? So basically, they would first use something, use the MAC addresses. So router, the first, in the very first occurrence of the connection, the router will identify computer A and computer B with their MAC addresses using a protocol called ARP request or ARP protocol. So ARP is the protocol. So the router would know the MAC address of computer A and computer B using a protocol called ARP or address resolution protocol, which is, you know, a communication protocol used for discovering the MAC addresses of devices. So at the very first, computer A would ask for the MAC address of the router and the router will say hi yeah my MAC address is uh, this let's say right so computer A now and router have exchanged their MAC addresses the same with computer B and computer and, and router they will exchange their MAC addresses using the protocol ARP after they identified each other with the MAC addresses computer A now will ask ra router for uh, an IP address hey Assign me an IP address. As the assignments of IP address in an internal network is done by using a protocol called DHCP. So DHCP is where IP addresses are assigned. Now, normally DHCP, there are two parts to the DHCP, the server and the client. The server and the client. So the server is the part who is assigning the IP addresses. The client is the part who is requesting the IP address. So in this case, the router is a DHCP server and the computer A and computer B are the DHCP clients. Now that is an example of internal network All right, this is an internal network. We have two devices maybe five, maybe seven, maybe 100 devices behind a simple router 
uh, in some scenarios there would be switches, firewalls, but this is too advanced for this uh, tutorial. We will only stick with a simple example like that. Now, the external network. The external network is anything outside the IP addressing or outside this, uh, these IP addresses, which is the internet. Now, the internet uh, use public IP addresses. Public IP to communicate. Internal networks use inter, uh, private IP addresses. Private IP. So, as you can see, 192.168.1.168.15.11, these are all private IP addresses. They are used to communicate internally. Now, if computer A and computer B want to reach the internet, they would need something called a public IP address. The public IP address is assigned by your internet service provider or the ISP. They would assign you an internet public, a public IP before um, to reach the internet. It would be static or it would be dynamic depending on your needs. But for now, let's say it is static. So there, uh, when when you publish, uh, when you publish, <laughs> when you purchase a subscription from the ISP, they would tell you, hey, your public IP v public IP address is let's say 99.155.32.1. Uh, let's say 10. This is your an example of public IP address. Now, this IP address, all right, will be registered here in the router and now all computers computer b and computer a when they want to reach the internet they will be assigned this ip address here this is the public ip address okay then now that is how devices communicate and that is how the difference between internal and external network note that um, mac addresses cannot be used while cannot be used to communicate while you are on the external network on the external network uh, only ips are used to communicate ipv6 or ipv4 mac addresses are used to discover for device discovery in an internal network all right now that is for now let's take now um, <coughs> an example with a tool a very popular tool called the pink so if you want to assess the performance of a connection and if you want to find out if a specific host is live or not you would do, you would use the tool called pink so pink is a tool used to make sure that devices are able to communicate with each other and you would use pink actually and when you set up a network you would use pink to try and make sure that your setup is correct so let's take an example now how would we know that computer a is able to reach the router yeah i know we can just try to access the internet but as someone who is learning networking how would you know that you would type one uh, pink 192.168.1.1 now when you enter if computer A is able to reach router, when you ping it, okay, all right, you will be receiving replies from the router. So as you can see here, the router is replying to my requests. Ping sends echo requests. Now here the reply comes from the router called echo replies. And there are some statistics about the number of packets you sent and the number of packets you received and here uh, the number of packets that have been lost, which is zero here, which means that the connection between computer A and B is alive. Now, at the same way, or likewise, you can also use computer B and try to ping the router to make sure that computer B is able to reach the router. Likewise, you would be able, likewise, you can just use ping to make sure that the connection between the devices is alive. Now, how I can know if I can reach the internet? Yeah, you can just type, uh, you can just browse the internet using the browser, right? But with ping, you can just type ping and google.com. Now, if you receive replies from Google, it means you can reach Google 
and it means that Google is also alive. So this demonstrates that I can access the internet and that google.com is actually alive. Now there is more to ping than just uh, testing the uh, connectivity between devices. We can just type ping dash h to get uh, the list of command line options you can use with the ping command. All right, now that is for today. Before I finish, there is a room on Try Hack Me called What is Networking? And this room actually is recommended if you are just getting started. I'm going to use some examples from here to answer some questions. So, all right. So, what does the term IP stand for? IP stands for Internet Protocol. So, the next one. What is each section of an IP address called? So, we said that an IP address is composed of four sections. They are called octet. How many sections in digits does an IP have? How many sections in digits does an IP have? So, four. What does this term MAC stand for? So we said that MAC stands for Media Access Control. All right, next one. Deploy the interactive lab using view site button and spoof your MAC address to access the site. Let's see what is that interactive lab here. So here we have the interactive lab and we can see Alice is sending requests to the router here and the router is routing the request to tryhackme.com so Alice is able to reach tryhackme conversely Bob is not able to reach as you can see all of the requests there are no clear requests sent from Bob to tryhackme which means that the router has some mechanism blocking requests from Bob okay now here the scenario in the question is saying deploy the interactive lab using the view site and spoof your MAC address this suggests that the router here is blocking Bob's MAC address from uh, accessing the internet so what we can do here we can use MAC spoofing so Bob can temporarily of course change their MAC address to be equal with the MAC address of Alice. So let's take this and say request site. As you can see, Bob is able to reach try hack me. Now, that's the idea of MAC spoofing actually. And actually, MAC spoofing can be done with, there are, there are several tools to uh, just um, perform MAC spoofing but you can you can always counter measure can, uh, uh, max spoofing with several methods we're not going to talk about that it's too advanced for the tutorial now ping so we have also an interactive tutorial here let's view the site so ping now what what protocol what protocol does ping what's that what protocol does ping use so protocol ping uses a protocol called icmp Now, what is the syntax to ping 10, 10, 10, 10? So we type syntax here, ping, and ping followed by the IP address. What, the, what flag do you get when you ping 8888? Let's see here. So on the interactive tutorial here, we can just type in the IP 8. 888 and send the ping request now this is the flag but by the way you would ask me what is the dash c here dash c is the count of packets it means that i am sending four icmp packets 
to the address 8888. You can increase the number of packets, of course, it's up to you. And lastly, all right, lastly, intro to LAN, we will do that later. Uh, so that's it for today. I hope you find that helpful and see you in the next video.